Hi there, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to create an effect something like this. So the idea is that we've got what appears to be sand falling down in this hourglass and then we turn the hourglass over and the whole thing starts again. So it's mostly about how we manipulate the shapes of these sand objects inside this apparent hourglass. So to begin with we just need to make our initial hourglass shapes. So there's many different ways to do this but I started with a cube Go into edit mode and subdivide a few times and then if we do F3 and say start typing sphere we should have the option to sphere and then as we move the mouse pointer you can see that turns it into a sphere. Now you could just start with an icosphere or the basic sphere primitive and either of those will work but for my purposes I thought I'd like a nicer mesh because the fact that I'm going to be using this or a version of this to animate and it's always better to have quads which is objects with four vertices than it is to have things like tries or triangles or other kinds of polygons which can cause artifacts or are more likely to cause artifacts. So I'm now going to press Control 7 which means I look at it from below and I'll select that central point and then Control plus and I've now got that bottom set selected. Press E and then G just to GZ just to bring that down a little and I'll narrow that in scale Z0 to make it flat and then E, G, Z. I'm going to be smoothing this all off in a moment. So that's a sort of golf ballish sort of shape and then X and delete those faces. I'm going to go into edit mode and you can see the origin point in the middle there and I'm just going to lift it up so that little orange origin point in the same place as the 3D cursor at the moment is just there. Now come over to modifiers and we'll add a mirror modifier and we'll say do it on the Z. We'll turn on clipping and we'll just join the two together. And now control 2 to add a subdivision surface. So that's not quite what we're looking for at the moment. We need to smooth that out quite a bit. So I'll select all the vertices, right click and say smooth vertices. And then we can play around with how much we smooth it, how many repeats on the smooth. And I spent quite a bit more time just getting the shape to look how I felt an hourglass should look. I turned on proportional editing there and I felt it should be more like that and I wanted a more noticeable neck. So it's not perfect but we'll use that for now. So we'll quickly give this a glass material, call it glass and nothing too special. I set the roughness to quite a low value, 0.04. I found an index of refraction. I found an index of refraction of about 1.5 to give me the effect I was looking for and I set transmission up at maximum and the color to full white. Because we need to be looking at things like refraction and so on we need a reasonably good lighting for the scene so let's just while we're here let's just go to the world setup and we'll say use nodes and we'll change the background. So I'm going to add a texture which is an environment texture plug that into color and then we'll open an HDRI. I got this from HDRI Haven and we'll use this one here, which is the one I used. And there you can see we've got some half decent lighting already and I haven't added any kind of lamps into the scene as yet. And you really need that when you're playing around with translucent or, tra or particularly transparent objects. It's difficult to see how they're working with very simple lighting. And I should say this is all about a cycles scene. So there are some constraints on how things are gonna work and we're gonna have issues with noise and stuff like that. But we'll deal with that as we go along. So that's our basic hourglass glass shape and now we need to create the sand that goes inside. So I'm not going to create actual particles and in this case the noise generated by objects inside a transparent object will actually work in our favour because it will give us an effect of moving particles without us even seeing them. So we need to create the two shapes up here and here of the sand in its appropriate shape. So one's going to be slightly pointy, the one that's sat up here and one's going to be flat and obviously the hourglass will appear to have all of its sand down here to begin with. So let's just create some just some flat sand that sits in here. Before we do that though let's just add one other little thing which is a solidify modifier just to give our hourglass a little bit of thickness and I'm going to apply the scale because that will affect how the thickness works and you can see that's having more of an effect now because there is some thickness to the glass. There are many different ways that I can do the next part, but I'll actually just create another cube and I don't need to subdivide this cube, even though this is gonna be the sand that's in the middle. What I will do is just to make it easy to see is give it a material, I'll call this sand, 
We'll make this some sort of yellowish sand. Mine was green in my other one. And we'll copy it to the viewport display so we can quickly see what's sand and what's not. It needs to be bigger than one of the bulbs. We're in all the graphics so we can see that's now enclosing that whole bulb. And I'm just going to select that top face and just drop it to about where I want the sand to sit. We'll go with somewhere about there. I'm just going to reset the origin. Not essential, but sometimes you can get some weird effects. Okay, so now we're going to use another modifier, which is a Boolean modifier. So remember, this object is hollow. It's not a solid sphere because of the way that we've created. So what I want to do is subtract the glass part of the hourglass from this cube. So we need to click that, this little object here and then say object. If I momentarily hide that object, you can see there's a little rim there. So it's cut out where the glass was. And that's just what I need. One thing I do want to do though, is let's just first of all rename the hourglass and we'll call that hourglass. And we'll call the other object sand lower for the moment. And I also think I'll just thicken that glass up a little. We'll go to 0.02. Now I've selected my sand lower object and I'm just going to apply that Boolean modifier. So I'll hide my glass again. I just did that by pressing H. Go into edit mode. I'm going to select a vertex there and then control L. And you notice there's a ring of vertices that we can see that are not selected. If I go into wireframe view, you can see what's happened. So we've got everything outside has been selected, but nothing inside has. So if I now press X and delete vertices, we've now got a set of vertices which are the inside. Now it's worth selecting all of them and just scale with shift press to make it fine and scale it in a little bit. So just making it slightly smaller. And then I'm going to select that ring of vertices on the top, press E, scale it in and go quite a long way in. And then control R if you've got loop tools on and just add some loops here because we're going to need them. So we've now got a shape which will hopefully sit within our hourglass. If we go to rendered view and I'll just move my camera around a little bit and there you can see what appears to be sand sitting inside our glass and you can see what I mean about the noise sort of almost giving you the effect of sand albeit it won't be that extreme. So that's the lower sand and what about the sand that's up here when it's pouring. So we could do the same thing again. We'll call this one sand upper. We'll give it the same material. And we just need to decide, to hide my camera there, where it's gonna go. So I guess somewhere about there before the sand falls away. And just make sure it encloses the entire object. And then the same process again. So we're going to modifiers, we'll add a Boolean. We'll select our hourglass and then we apply it. Hide the hourglass, select our object, select a vertex on the outside, control L to select all of the detached vertices and delete them. What we do need to do is just scale that in and add some vertices there. So there's our initial hourglass created. Obviously, one of the key things that's wrong here is that we've got sand at the top and sand down at the bottom and clearly it's the same quantity of sand. So what we need to do is to be able to change what that appears to be. So I'm going to hide my hourglass again and I'm going to add another cube. Now I'm going to do this in two separate ways, but you could do it as one object that moves and you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit just to make sure it fully encloses the sand and bring it up. And you notice I've taken it to just above my sand object. I'm also going to add an empty. So an empty is just an object that you can use to connect to other objects or affect other objects. It doesn't have any vertices, so it doesn't render. So it's just there in the middle. And now I'm going to select my cube, then my empty and press control P and say object. So now when that empty moves around, the cube moves with it. While I'm at it, I may as well define a second one. So I've copied that cube G Z So that cube is going to go there. Now, the other thing is I need a shape because obviously the sand doesn't fall down in a completely flat way. But we'll set this top one up first so you can see what I mean. The top one's easier because for all intents and purposes, we'll make it flat. It doesn't have to be. I know that in a real hourglass, you'd get a sort of cone inside and you can certainly simulate that with this approach. But I'm just going to make it flat because it's not really visible. So I'm going to select my sand upper and add a modifier and again it's the boolean modifier. I'm going to select 
the cube here. And while I've got that cube selected, it's vanished because it's currently beneath the empty. We'll call this sand ball up. And we'll call the other one sand ball low. So if I go into wireframe mode and I move that cube down, you can see it's erasing that sand. And that's what we want to happen over time. So I'm now going to keyframe this element here. So I'm just I'm going to get the start at frame 10 rather than right at the beginning. And I'll press I and we'll select location. You need to determine how long you want this sand to take to run out. A minute is obviously a long time. I went with much shorter than that for obvious reasons. We said 100 frames, so that will take us up to 110. Then that's about four seconds. So that's quite a short hourglass. And then GZ to move that down to the bottom of my hourglass so no sand is now visible. Just check it's not sticking out the top. Press I and say location. Now you will want to play around with the interpolation. So if I right click that dot and say interpolation mode, in theory, the sand should run out faster as the volume of sand left is smaller. And I tried using some of the options like these on there, but they didn't seem to be that convincing. So I think I ended up with just linear. You don't want it to be slow to start with, which is what you'll get if you just leave it on the default, which is Bezier. So I'll just put it on linear for the moment. So if we go back to here and we go to field view. The other thing we want to do, of course, is we don't want to see these cubes. So I've come up to the object properties and under visibility, we don't want them visible in renders. We don't want them affecting any of these things, probably turning off renders turns all these off anyway, but under viewport display, we'll display them as bounds. So now it's just a, a square. And now we'll do the same for this one, but we do want it selectable. I turned off shadow as well. So now if we press play, you can see that our sand appears to be running out as this cube moves down. And now we need to do the reverse with this one. So if we take this one down here, so it's just enclosed all of the sand. We go to frame 10 because we know that's when the sand starts to fall. We keyframe that, just location, and then we go to frame 110. And we lift that up to just above and keyframe that location. And then we go to our object and again put on boolean modifier selecting that cube and go to the beginning and press play and you can see the top one is falling and we're getting sand up here at the bottom but the obvious thing that's a problem is that the sand is appearing completely flat so we need to apply some shape to that so i'm just going to disable that boolean for a moment select my object and i'm going to select these inner vertices here turn on proportional editing and then we need to find a shape that's what we think looks about right. So should it be that or we can try a different shape. We can try smooth, which is the default. I think that is what I ended up with. So something like that, just to give us a little pile. And the idea is that the sand's piling up here and then running down to the sides. And what I now need to do is come up to 110 because I know that's where that cube is just impinging on that top. And we need to cut that shape out of the cube. So I'm going to just turn off this boolean at the moment just so that it doesn't interfere. I'm going to select my cube and I'm going to add a boolean to that. Select my object and we'll apply that. So you can't see it at the moment because I've just got the bounding box visible. But I'll come back to here now and add a boolean back into there. Again, selecting my cube. I know this is a bit confusing, but essentially what I've done is I've cut with a boolean that shape out of the bottom of that cube. So you can now see that cube is sticking up above and we've still got some sand down there. So I need to change the shape of that cube slightly. So what I'll do is I'll just make the top of the cube a little higher and the bottom of the cube a little lower. And I need to make sure I select all of the vertices for the cube so that the sand disappears completely. You need to be in wireframe to make sure they're all selected like that. I could also have adjusted the overall position of the cube. So if we now press play with solid view on, we should be able to see that the top is disappearing. We've got a little bit of a problem with the bottom. It took too long for anything to show. 
So if we go into edit mode, we really want things to be showing within a few frames of frame 10. So if we go to say frame 13 and then start to lift up here, there you can just see a little bit of darkness where the sand is starting to appear. You can see there's a little bit of sand there now. And you can now see as it falls down from the top, it rises up from the bottom. And you will need to do some tweaking to get this to look how you think it should look. And there it is. So if I bring everything back, we'll just go to 16 and adaptive sampling for the render in the viewport. And do remember to turn seed to automatic here. So it uses an animated seed, otherwise it won't look quite right. You'll get a sort of screen door effect. So if we have a look at that now, getting a few odd effects here, the fact that the frames aren't keeping up, but you can see we're now getting that sand effect. So we've got a few artifacts there. We just need to clean that up a little bit. So if we hide our glass, select our sand. One of the things it's worth doing is just checking face orientation. So they're blue. So everything's okay. If you had red, it means you need to swap the vertices. The other thing is, I think particularly for the top one, we probably need to shrink that in a bit. I don't think I did that before. So if we go back up to the top, select the whole shape and just scale it in ever so slightly so that it's not touching or impinging with the glass. And then that should give a slightly better look. If we come down to our render settings. I'm going to turn off auto tile and I'm going to select 512 because that tends to be faster on my graphics card. I ended up using the denoiser built in. You'll need to try different options. So I ended up using the NLM denoising option. There are a couple of options in here. And if we render that now, and this is still only 128 samples. And our HDRI comes out fairly noise free. If you had other objects like a tabletop in the scene, which I did, you will find they tend to start to get noisy as well. I'll just put a plain surface. I won't worry too much about it. And you can see we've got a fair bit of noise there. One thing it's worth doing under the render properties is have a look at the light paths. Now, if we didn't have glass in here, I would turn off reflective and refractive caustics. But because we do, we actually want those. They do cause a certain amount of noise in a cycles render. But it may also be worth looking at transmission. Now this looks pretty good to me, so we probably don't need to change it. But if you're finding objects inside the glass are too dark, you may need to turn transparency and transmission bounces up. So we could go up to 16 and 24. And of course that may slow your render slightly. So the last little thing we need to do in terms of the geometry, and then I'll just talk a little bit about how to deal with this noise a little, is we want to turn this hourglass over. So we know it's finished running out by 110. So let's go to 125. And buried in here is our little empty to which our two Boolean blocks are attached. If I press G, you can see they move around. Slightly pausey because it's trying to do Booleans as well at the same time. I'm going to go to wireframe and I'm going to select the glass and then I'm going to select the empty, control P and say object. So now I can rotate glass like that. So we also have to parent the sand objects to this empty. So I'll just hide the glass, select the top sand, select the empty, control P, keep transform, and then do the same with the bottom sand. And we'll now come up to frame 125, which is where the sand has run out, obviously. And we'll select and we'll bring the glass back We'll select our empty and we'll say I and store rotation. We'll take a second, which is about 25 frames for my animation. So come up to frame 150 and then we'll rotate on the Y 180 degrees. And again, I to store that rotation. The default should be Bezier curve, but just to make sure, because we did change the linear for one of our other options, We'll just make sure that's on Bezier. So it starts slow, speeds up, and then slows down at the end. So we'll come back to here. We'll go to wireframe so we can see what's going on. And we'll press play. And then we should see that the whole thing rotates, sand and all. That worked fine, but there is an issue. And if we hide the glass, you can see what the issue is here. 
The sand is where it should be, it's all at the top, but obviously it's completely the wrong shape. So this is a little bit tricky, but we'll get through it. I'm gonna just hide some of these objects that are getting in the way at the moment. We need to basically change the shape of this sand with animation, because obviously as it turns over, this now needs to drop into the hourglass into roughly the shape that we had at the beginning. So if we turn our hourglass back on, but we'll go to wireframe, this needs to be in here. But if I just, for example, was to lower that down, you can see the whole sand disappears until it starts to come out the bottom. So first of all, this needs to move. So we know the sand should fall down at about 150. So we could play around and make this very complicated, but the easiest thing to do is to say keyframe where that is at 150. So keyframe the location and then at 151, so it's only one frame later, we'll lift that up to somewhere around here where we think the level of the sand should be and keyframe that. So if I go back a few frames now, we can see it turns over and then that jumps up and we could make it slightly sooner if we wanted to, but it just jumps. It's because it's from one frame to the next. So you won't see a gradual change. So now we need to deal with our sand the edge here is fine. What we need to do is bring that sand down. So we still got the sand tip selected there, which is fine. So we'll turn on proportional editing and we'll see what it looks like if we just start to pull that down. And it's not too bad. I need to stay within the glass. So I don't want to change the shape yet, but what I do want to do, come out of edit mode, come down to here, which is object data properties and add a shape key. And the first one will be called basis, add another one, and that'll be called key one. So key one is the one we want to change. So I can now start altering the shape of this to get the effect I want. I'm gonna to need to make a few changes, but I can see there's the inner edge of my glass about here. And obviously these other areas need to expand as well. And you may find you can just do this by just finding the right proportional editing shape to use. But we do want to stay away from impinging on the glass itself if we can. That's not bad, it's not perfect. So now if I hide the glass, you can see I select my object and turn the key one valued up to one we get that shape at the bottom. Now I'm gonna just turn off, and I could spend a bit more time and extend that down a bit further, and that's fine. So for the top half, a flat top is fine. If you wanted to, you can adjust the shape of this. But obviously what we now need to do is add some more movement to that. So from about frame 151, because that's where that suddenly jumped up, we need the sand to start dropping again. And we took 100 frames before, so presumably it will take 100 frames again. So we've already marked that position. So we need to go up to frame 251. So let's just take the end frame up to 300, go to 251 and G, Z, and bring this down to just below where our sand is. So we've got our approximate shape. Obviously you can spend a bit longer making it nicer, but at the moment the sand's not gonna take that shape up automatically. So we know we've effectively said the sand appears to drop at about 151. You can see it's still up there at that point. So what we need to do is say, at a frame 150, we'll keyframe key one and just press I hovering over it at zero. So we know this little block will shoot up at 151. We go on one more frame. So we will set the key one value to one at that frame and press I on there. So what it will do is just suddenly appear to just drop down like that. So that's fine, but we do have in this particular animation a slight issue with the blocks. So if we just set the block movement off now, so we know we're set in the right position at frame 151, but we need to go up to frame 251 because obviously it'll be the same amount of time on the this way around as it was the other and we need to move the block down. Now we're going to have a slight issue and that's because of the shape and size of the block. We just need to make sure all of the sand is gone, which is about there, and we'll mark the location. Again, just check that interpolation is linear. So what we'll do is we'll add a shape key to this object as well. So we'll click plus over here and again, go into edit mode and just lift that up to about there. Come out of edit mode. So we'll come back to here. If you use these little buttons, this will make it go straight to the keyframe and we'll just go one more. So this is where it's in that mode, which is fine. So we'll say I over there to store the keyframe for that shape. And then we'll jump to the next keyframe and we'll turn that up to one and we'll press I there. So now as that drops down, 
by the time it's dropped down the cube has stretched out. So if I do this, you can see it suddenly stretches out at the top so that when it drops down we don't get that problem and now we need to adjust the other one. You could probably add a second boolean to this object and the other sand object and just use the same blocks and not turn them over. But this is the way that I did it for this one. So we obviously need to do something with the bottom block as well, which of course started off as the top block. It's fine to start with, so 151, so frame 151 is where the sand starts to come out. So this is when that block needs to start to move and you can see that's where it's going to go. However, we need to adjust the shape of the sand at the bottom first. So if I select sand upper, which is of course now at the bottom, and go to the boolean modifier and just disable that, we can now see that's got completely the wrong shape at the moment. And we'll turn our hourglass back on so that I can see what I'm doing. Come down here and we'll add our shape key and our key one turning on proportional editing and I think initially scale Z minus one will start to get us to the shape that we want. I'm doing this all in edit mode so this will work with the shape key. It doesn't matter too much what we can't see and I'm just going to select the whole thing except for the top and we'll say smooth vertices. So now if I turn my shape key up that's done that. We do need to do one other slight change and that is we need our little cone on the top and again we'll do the same process as we did before so I'll probably need to go back and add a shape key for this one as well but let's just add the boolean subtract that shape apply it and then put this boolean back so at this point we'll start the movement for this object again they could be linked but it gives you more control if you animate them separately we know this one starts moving at frame 151. So if we go to wireframe and we bring up the hourglass, we can see that block needs to jump as well. Because although we can't see any sand at the moment, once we finish changing the shape, it's going to fill all of this area. So we'll go to frame 150 and we'll store the location of that block. Then we'll go to frame 151 and we'll just bring it to here and store that location. So that'll just quickly jump that block down. And now we can see we've got our sand up there. We'll disable the Boolean for the moment so we can see it better. And if we turn the key up, you can see our sand drops down. So we can see our sand here. It's currently invisible because it's covered by the block. Once the shape key is activated, it will be visible again if we just left the block the way it is. So what we need to do is around frame 150, we'll add a shape key for the block and then add another one and drop that down so it encloses everything. We'll go to frame 151 and we'll keyframe that. So now the block will just increase in size and then we'll go up to frame 251 GZ and we'll move the block up to well above where the sand is going to be and keyframe that location. So as before we have that rising up and we need to make that linear for its interpolation mode. The quick ones don't matter so much. You can see the two of them going there. Go to our frame 150. We'll keyframe the shape key one setting for this block of sand. And then 151, we'll put that up to full and keyframe that. So now this can start to reveal the sand. Now in theory, I ought to be able to do the same and just use the Boolean to create the shape that I need. But I had trouble with that. So I may just do it manually. If I hide this and go to solid, so I should just be able to cut out the shape that I need from this top of the block. Possibly shape keys will interfere with it. Yeah, it's not working. It worked the first time I did it, decided not to work this time. So what we'll do is we'll just model a shape at that end. And the easiest way to do that is as key one, we'll just hide this. I'll show this in wireframe and we'll subdivide a number of times and we'll go with something about there and we'll probably need to extend that down a bit now so if we go to key one select all the vertices at the bottom there and just take it to about there and we'll re-enable our boolean there and you can see that we've got that working so if we have a look at it in wireframe we get to frame 10 And you may just be able to see we've got some sand building up there at the bottom. 
as it runs out from the top. And then the whole thing will flip over. We may need to make some adjustments to how fast this block's moving and where it is and so on. So it looks to me like that's too low now. I think I didn't have it on the right keyframe when I set the position. So I'll just raise it up and then we won't have the delay. And the whole thing's going again. So if I just hide the glass and then go back to solid view, hide this table. Obviously we're looking to get the two things to stop at about the same time. I probably need to adjust that slightly. The bottom one probably needs to go a bit faster. But we end up there and with our sand having run out and filling the bottom. So I'll just render that quickly. So with the current settings I've got, which is rendering at 128 samples, which is not that high, that's a nice image, but you will tend to find, this one's not actually too bad at the moment, but that there will be noise and the noise will sort of scintillate. With the sand, that's actually a good thing because it gives you that better impression of sand. I did put a bit more effort into giving the sand a grainy looking texture as well, but what you don't want is this sort of scintillation happening down here. Now that's not too bad at the moment and it's only a 28 second render, so that's actually not a problem. If I was to do this at say 32 samples, we'll have quite a bit more noise left. Bearing in mind that I've got the denoising going on as well, and that's really taking away most of the noise. But that can only do so much. So you've got some here, and sometimes you don't actually want denoising. So you might want part of the scene with it and part of it without it. Now whether you can fully composite within Blender or some other tool, one quick approach, particularly if the scene is static, or if you want to vary the amount of samples that you apply to different parts of the scene, is you could actually render this as two different parts. So you could render a back plate, in other words, everything except the parts that move, so the hourglass, everything except for that, and do that at as many samples as you need to do. A thousand samples if you like, because you're only going to render one. And then you can render just the foreground, which would just be the hourglass itself, and its shadow at the lower number of samples. You do need to remember that you will need to set this table as invisible, because you don't want to be constantly rendering that. But you do want to catch the shadows and potentially reflections. For example, in here, you can turn off ray visibility of the camera, but you want to keep all the rest of this stuff in here. You may even want to use just shadow catcher. And then what you do when you render under film, you turn on transparent. You see the background has disappeared now. And under the output options, make sure you select RGBA. If you just select RGB, you'll just get a black background, which may work for you but won't be exactly what you need. You can see looking through the glass here, I still got the background showing. So that will mean you can either render this at a lower number of samples now because it's just this bit that it's rendering or indeed still render it at the higher number of samples, but it's only having to render this part. The rest is all transparent, so there's nothing to render there or very little. It's just looking for shadows really. And if I just rendered that, so that rendered in 11 seconds, albeit that's still a relatively low sample rate. Bearing in mind that for moving images, denoising isn't always perfect, or well, it's never perfect, but it isn't always the best thing. You still can get some artifacts. So just bear that in mind. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, let me know. I'll make these files available to my Patreon subscribers, and there are links to my Patreon account and my Facebook page and so on in the description below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to click like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.